take a look at this thing. So the senior housing team invited me over to come check out this beautiful set of Voigtlander lenses and I want to talk about it. But with that said, let's get to testing. In this fast-paced technological world, it's easy to get caught up on the endless scrolling of social media. Mindless, numb, and I'm guilty of that too. That's why sometimes I like to revert to the old technologies from a time where things were made to give us real experiences, to make you get up, go outside, and see the world for what it truly is. And not this over-polished version that we see on those tiny screens that we have in our pockets. Now these analog machines allow us to freeze a moment in time. Simply because It doesn't always have to be the perfect shot. So let me know, what did you think of this short that you just watched? All of the indoor scenes were shot at F2 and all of the outdoor scenes were shot at F4 because they didn't have any diffusers for them. Most of these lenses go all the way to F2.0. Some of them even go to F1.2 and F1.4, but of course, because of the lack of energy, we couldn't do it, so we just kept it all at F4. This was all color grade with the enhancer for that film emulation, but let's pick some specific frames, and then we put it on the Rack 709 with just some contrast and saturation, so we can go over some details. Okay, let's take a look at this frame right here, where I'm just fed up of social media and I want to do something else and I look at the camera and I grab it and that's where it starts the the journey to take the, the perfect picture. We really like this shot over here because the color contrast between the blue and the orange and this was shot with the 50mm f2. Let's switch to the Rec 709. This image looks great you know you see it's really nice and sharp the out of focus area is really nice and clean the color rendering on the skin is quite good as well. This is a trend that you're gonna see in these lenses they're really sharp and if we go to a next shot, this outdoor shot right here uh, with the 15 mil, this is kind of crazy because you can see that this is a 15 mil lens on a full frame. So it's very, very wide and it has virtually no distortions on the side. You can see here the straight lines of this door, they are still straight. And you can tell the little line of this roof, they're still really straight. So it's crazy to me that there's pretty much no distortion on the edges of the frame and even the edges of the frame are pretty much sharp. You can see a little bit of blur there but it's because if we're shooting at 24 fps and we're walking backwards so of course you're gonna have the natural blur but I'm sure that if we're just taking this shot static it would be considerably sharp. Uh, we're talking about a 15 mil here, it shouldn't be sharp at the edges and you should have a lot of distortion. So this is actually crazy. And if you zoom into my head here, you see there's ver there's literally no chromatic aberration. So this is, the, I think, the closest that you're gonna get from like a optically perfect lenses. And this is what they actually was, were trying to do. And yeah, they nailed it. So let's go to a few more frames. This one, again, if you go over here, very high contrast area between my hat that is in the shade and the sky and there is no chromatic aberration virtually no distortion on this on the edge of the frame here with these containers and then if you go here for a more of close-up you got the 65 awesome and here the 110 which is a macro if you take a look here really sharp as you expected no distortion either at, at 110 with such close-up good colors so this is how it performs in a real world situation when you only have natural light so let me take you back to the studio where we had like a control environment over there let's run some more tests let's go so we're back here on the cine housing studio and on the camera left here we have a really big light with a huge white cloth just to diffuse the light and then we have that spotlight at the back just for to give the rim light. And then of course those two lights at the back just to give a little bit more color. Some fairy lights to show the bokeh and then the color cards here on the right. So this is how the 15 mil look. This is the close focus of the 15 and it's pretty close. It's really good. Here's the lens flare test. Very controlled. I really like how, how it flares. And you can see that the 15 again is really nice and sharp like all of them no distortions on the corners which is kind of crazy like I mentioned before and um, this is all Rec 709 with just some contrast and saturation yeah this is how the 15mm looks 
we forgot that the focus breathing and the bokeh test on the 15 mil. We can kind of see the bokeh in the background. For all the others, we did do it, so let's get to it. All right, then this is how the 21 look. And let's go to the close focus. And again, I think this is really good. And one thing that they do really well is the close focus. I think it's really, really good. This is the focus breathing of the 21. Uh, we could have done a, a little bit of a better job going to the background, but it has a little bit of a focus breathing like you're gonna see in all of them. Now, the lens flare here, it's a little different from the 15 mil, but I'm supposing it's because it's the F2. The lines on the flare are not as defined. It's pretty controlled but around the source of light, it loses a little bit of contrast, but it's, it's, it's really good, I like it, how it looks. And here on the bokeh test, you see this is like, I'm not even a huge fan because you can see all of those sharp edges around the, the bokeh balls, which I'm assuming is because of the number of aperture blades that they have. So yeah, on the 21, I'm not a fan of how the bokeh balls look, so let's go to the for next. So the 35 here is the first one of the apochromatic line that they have and I'll put here what apochromatic means and this is how the 35 mil look and let's go here for the close focus which again I think is amazing the close focus on all of these lenses are it's, it's pretty outstanding now here when it comes to the focus breathing it does have a considerable amount of focus breathing but these are photography lenses they were not made for filmmaking so I'm not sure they were thinking about the focus breathing when they were making them and for me it's not a deal breaker anyway but if, if for you focus breathing is a deal breaker be aware that this whole lineup has significant focus breathing and let's go here for the flare test I really like this the flare on this one if you if you pay attention to, to the bottom of the frame where those flare rings appear there that is really beautiful and, and but it's very controlled you don't you don't lose a lot of contrast really good on the flaring on the, on the 35 and now let's go for the bokeh test uh, and here now you can see a total difference between this and the first two especially the 21 the apochromatic length of lineup has this beautiful cat's eye bokeh balls and these are my favorite i really love them you can kind of see a little bit of an onion pattern inside those bokeh balls but that doesn't bother me at all they look absolutely beautiful and i love i think this is my favorite of the of the bokeh so far is this 35. so going now to the 40 this is how the 40 looks and it's a nocturne again is not in the apochromatic anymore and let's go for the close focus which amazing I love how how close the close focus on all of them are focus breathing significant I'm not gonna say it's controlled it's quite significant and you can see here in the flare test that the flares are more defined from the source unlike the 35 which is the apochromatic one but very very controlled no loss of contrast so this is pretty good and now for the bokeh test again the same as the 21 very sharp edges around those bokeh balls which i'm not the biggest fan for me it can be round but as long as it doesn't have all those sharp edges i'm fine with it um so yeah i'm not the hugest fan you guys let me know what you think so we're at the 50 now and this is how it looks again super sharp very nice and this is something else that i forgot to mention i didn't have to change anything when it came to the color between these lenses the color is very consistent across the board so this is I was really surprised on how good the colors are and you don't have to change anything. This is a huge plus. No chromatic aberration, nothing. The close focus again, super good. I'm impressed with the close focus. And going here to the focus breathing is just like the other ones, quite pronounced, is, is not, not surprising at this point, but for me, not a deal breaker. And then the flare test, very soft flare coming out from the source. And then just a little bit of the lens reflection coming across here, which is really nice. I like it, very controlled. And then for the bokeh balls, beautiful. That cat's eye bokeh ball again. Even think that this one is a little more smoother than the 35. You don't really have as much of the onion layers uh, inside them. So this might be the best one so far in terms of the bokeh balls. Here we get into the first macro lens, is the 65, is also an apochromatic. Being a macro lens, of course, the minimum focus distance is gonna be hella close, which is cool, and I love it. It's gonna be very versatile for a lot of uses. And then, of course, the focus breathing is this one's gonna be the 
most pronounced of all of them so far. I'm guessing it's because the 65 in a macro, it's expected, I guess, but for me, don't really care anyway. So going into the flare test, this one is a very interesting one. So if you notice from the source, you have these transition rings that they almost get like rainbow colors. And this is really, really cool. I love lens flares. So I really like this one. This might be my favorite lens flare so far. And let's take a look at the bokeh balls. Again, beautiful cat's eye bokeh ball, but this one has a little bit of the, the, those onion layers. Doesn't bother me at all. And finally, we're on the 110 macro apochromatic as well. And that background compression, insane, is still very sharp. So let's see. <laughs> The close focus on this one, I have to walk really far because it is a macro. So yes, this is how close you can get with that one. Beautiful. And with the focus breathing, very pronounced as you're gonna expect, but we, we talk about it. Lens flare, very similar to the 65 with that circle transition. Doesn't have as much color to them as the 65 and maybe it's because I wasn't pointing perfectly in the middle. I'm not sure, but I still love it. But the 65 so far is my favorite. And now let's take a look here at the bokeh test as well. So really nice cat's eye bokeh as well. I don't see the onion <laughs> onion rings on this one, the onion layers. So really nice and control. And so after shooting with this for a few hours and running some tests, what are my final thoughts on them? Let's talk about it. So this whole set, but especially the Apple Lanther one, were made to be as optically perfect as they can be. And I think they nailed it. I mean, they're sharp, they're clean, no chromatic aberration. The colors in between them, it's amazing. You have to do very little, if any, to match them all, which that is super impressive and this is gonna save you a lot of time. I didn't have to do anything to match them. Lens distortion nothing which that impressed me so much especially on the 15 mil no lens distortion i was i was super impressed with that the only things i think i guess would be how the bokeh balls look on the nocton series and the focus breathing but their photography lens they're not made to have zero focus breathing so you just have to to take it as they come so i can definitely see why somebody would want to build that set of lenses to use on their set, but they're not the cheapest lenses. They're around a thousand and a hundred pounds each. And then of course you have to house them and everything. So I'm not sure if at that point, shouldn't you just find a set of actual cinema lenses and just use that? You know, like this ones that I just got that I'm gonna be making a video about them, super excited, but these are not perfect at all but they're super cool, so stick around. Or you get an actual vintage lens like this Helios 44-2 and you house them and you make a set of vintage lenses that's gonna have different characters to them, which definitely my option. And this is actually what I'm going to do next. The Cine Housing team is gonna house this one for me. And then I'm gonna make a video in depth on how the housing works and how we <laughs> It makes your life a lot easier to have this house instead of having all these modifications. But yeah, if you're thinking about housing your vintage lenses and use it on a cinema set, reach out to the cinema housing team on Instagram. They're really cool people. You're gonna love their work. But tell me, what did you think about these Voigtlander lenses? Would you use them in your production? Do you like the sharp and clean look or like the vintage and soft look? I definitely like the second, but what do you like? Now, this video over here was shot in this Helios 44.2, so if you're curious to see how this little thing performs, give it a watch and let me know. But thank you very much for sticking around. I love you all. Bye. I'm gonna chill now. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna keep this in. Uh...